Well, Michigan's greatest resource is our fresh water, and it may be in danger. You're looking live now at Lake Michigan in Grand Haven. A new report finds data centers powering artificial intelligence are putting a strain on the Great Lakes. The report by the environmental group Alliance for the Great Lakes questions whether the Great Lakes can support these big data centers. Last year, Michigan lawmakers authorized new tax breaks to lure these types of AI businesses in. But the report finds an average facility can use more than 1 million gallons of water daily. I consider this only 1% of the water in the Great Lakes is replenished by rain, snow, and groundwater. So to try, try to understand more about this report, we have Helena Volzer, the Senior Source Water Policy Manager for the Alliance for the Great Lakes. Thank you so much for joining us. First of all, Thank I, you. I, I don't understand it. Can you explain why these data centers are using water? Yeah, sure. Uh, we'll start with, with the basics here of, of, of how data centers use water. So a data center can use water uh, through a method called evaporative cooling, and that's where water is sort of pushed by fans through a membrane to bring down the temperature inside the server room. Those servers get really hot for the computer processing that they're doing, uh, and that brings down the temperature in the room. When that method is used, more than half of that water can evaporate, and that's essentially what we call consumptive use. It's, it's lost to the watershed. Whatever isn't evaporated is either discharged or it can be recirculated in the data center once it's cooled down. There are other methods of cooling. Um, there's immersive cooling and directed chip cooling, uh, closed loop systems, which use less water, but have a higher electricity usage associated with them. When a data center uses more electricity than water, there's still water use associated with that if the data center is powered by fossil fuels or nuclear, uh, because in that energy generation process, you also have consumptive use of water. Uh, water's being used to cool turbines uh, in those methods of energy generation. So there's always a trade-off. Um, and, and so one of the, the things we highlight in the report is yes, data centers centers use water and, and we're urging states to think now about policy measures they might want to implement to be prepared for, for this influx of demand that we're seeing in the region. Gotcha. Do we currently have any data centers now that are that large consuming that much water or is this more of a, hey, if this happens, you need to be aware of it type of situation? Yeah, this is a really dynamic subject, and it's it's changing daily. But uh, you're, I think you're seeing in, in the media, if you're if you're following along, that that uh, the scale is really increasing. Uh, the, the data centers that are being cited now are, are of this hyperscale nature, needed and driven by uh, the the need to power generative AI. Uh, so that's really driving this, the growth in the hyperscale size data centers. And when I say hyperscale, there's no hard and fast definition of what that is, uh, but it can be you know. At minimum, in the literature that I've seen, you know, larger than 10,000 square feet, more than 5,000 servers, um, and using somewhere between one and five million gallons per day. Again, if evaporative cooling is being used, one of the difficulties with data centers is there's not a lot of transparency around how much water they're actually using. Uh, some companies have released corporate sustainability reports, but how much water a data center is really using is a bit obscured right now, and that's in part because data centers are hooking into municipal supplies, and when they do that, and the municipality has the ability to provide the water. There is no water use reporting requirement applicable to that data center. Uh, the water use reporting requirement really falls to the public water system. And so because of that, you know, less than a third of data center operators are even tracking their water usage. And so we don't really have a good insight into how much water they are using. And then at the siting stage, there's often non-disclosure agreements used uh, between a municipality and data center. So it's also obscured kind of about how much water is proposed to be used even at the outset of siting a project. Wow. Okay. So, so. I have so many questions for you here. First of all, do any of these massive data centers exist right now in, in Michigan? Uh, you know, I've been following a little bit, um, you know, the Alliance really doesn't tend to engage on individual projects. Our, our report, which is available at greatlakes.org, really talks about state level policy solutions that could be implemented throughout the region. Okay. Uh, I know there's there's been a data center proposed in Ypsilanti uh, of a, a very large scale, I believe. Um, another facility, you know, in Wisconsin, the, the Mount Pleasant uh, Microsoft data center there. So you're seeing these, these large scale facilities pop out throughout the region. Gotcha. Okay, so now going back to the conversation about, I'll call it transparency and how much water is actually used. I, I, I'm assuming, I think it's a safe assumption that your organization is pushing for more of it to understand there, but is there any talk at the state level to make it law. Yeah, that's that's what we'd like to see, right? So our, our policy recommendations in our report uh, pro propose some solutions to this issue, and one of them is public disclosure requirements kind of at that outset at the siting stage. Uh, there's been some proposed legislation in other states like New York and um, 
uh, Virginia has tried a number of times to enact something on this on this front, uh, but there's really been no, no not much progress on that front. Minnesota passed a bill this last legislative session that starts to get at this issue uh, by, re by requiring kind of a pre-application phase, uh, but that again is only for permitted users. That's where, where water users are withdrawing their own water. And so uh, I think what we'd like to see is, is more transparency on that front end. And then also, you know, on the back end, once the data center is cited, some water use reporting requirements so that we can have a sense of what the water footprint is of a data center. And if that changes over time and that that knowledge, that transparency is really important for municipalities and for the states to begin doing regional demand studies, which is another policy solution we're recommending that states start to do if they haven't already, mm -hmm. which is a localized study kind of in a, in a smaller uh, watershed area. For example, Ohio just completed one for the central Ohio region that looks at supply and demand, where water is available and where it's not, so that local governments and uh, econo economic development cores can start incorporating that in, in where they incentivize and where they encourage data centers to locate based on where water resources are available. I, I get, that was my next question for you, is that obviously the, the usage data is going to be key for you to help understand what's happening, but then are there any solutions to how much water is going to be needed, you know, the demand versus the supply. Yeah, so there are a number of solutions. I mean, data centers don't necessarily need finished, treated, potable drinking water that you and I need every day. They can use treated effluent, you know, um, with treated wastewater, non-potable water. And so there are some some state initiatives start exploring this kind of opportunity. Um, the, there's an association called the Water Reuse Association, which has state state level chapters. And Illinois and Ohio, you know, which are four and five in the country right now for the number of data centers, have started to form those associations. And uh, I know the one in Ohio is starting to look at this this issue of non-potable reuse and what can be done around encouraging that. And at the same time, we're hopeful that uh, there will also be discussion of setting some conservation and efficiency standards for this industry. Right now, we don't have a good understanding of what are the best practices inside a data center uh, to conserve water and, and electricity. So those standards need to be developed. And, and um, I think this these water reuse chapters are a place where those conversations can start to happen and start to look at what kind of laws might need to change to, to be able to incorporate that. Yeah. Okay, Helena, we talked for just a few minutes, but we could talk for hours on the subject, but we are out of time. Thank you so Absolutely. much for all your time this morning. I can't wait to see what happens next and what data you are actually able to get. Yeah, thanks so much for having me on. And if anyone's interested and want to learn more, uh, please visit greatlakes.org and the report's available there. Okay, will do. Thanks again.